Well, while he's pulling that up, um, I, I have a very strict deadline, so I'm just going to start already. So I'm, I'm Charles Basanza, and uh, formerly with the UNEP World Conservation Monitoring Center, and now with the CBD Secretariat, working with uh, Braulio and other colleagues. Now, if you look in the schedule for this session, I think it says I'm supposed to be talking about something else. But uh, I spoke with Piero yesterday, and uh, we were talking about the session overall, and I remarked, you know, that's all well and good, but who's going to pay for all of this very important work? You. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would share a few insights of, that the CBD Secretariat and the LifeWeb Initiative has, have developed about fundraising for different kinds of conservation projects, but I'll focus on invasive alien species. Okay, so you know about IET Biodiversity Target 9. Um, I don't have the next three very important slides, which I should have here, which is to note that Target 11, which is the one we're all here to talk about on protected areas, if you achieve Target 11, you end up achieving much of most of the rest of the IHG targets. Um, but there's two other ones that are very important for invasive alien species. Target 14, this is the one on ecosystem services and keeping the, the flow of, of ecosystem services. And then Target 15, which is about ecosystem resilience and ecosystem restoration. So invasive alien species management is a key way that we achieve all of those which help us to achieve IEG target 11. So there's a lot of interlinkages between all of these. But the key question is, for this presentation, how do we fund these? How do we fund the work to achieve these targets by 2020? So thankfully, we have uh, what we call the financial mechanism of the Convention on Biodiversity. And this is the, the GEF, the Global Environment Facility. Um, and the, the GEF is available for uh, 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 developing countries in the world. Now, I just have a question for the audience. Who here works for government in a developing country? Please raise your hand. And who here supports those same governments whose hands are still up uh, by working in partnership from NGOs or education or maybe there's students who want to be working with them? Okay, so it seems like quite a lot of the audience so this is relevant for you because this is a key uh, financial mechanism to achieve all of the, the work that we all need to do on invasive alien species. So every country has a GEF focal point, and this is a person that is responsible for coordinating among various institutions and in government about uh, who gets to actually submit proposals that go to the GEF. So you should get to know this person, they're very important. Find out who they are. Go to the Jeff website, or I can help you find out who that person is. You need, you need to know who that person is. The Jeff Programming Directions. So in May this year, the, uh, G, the Jeff Assembly agreed a new programming strategy, and the Biodiversity Focal Area Strategy includes a specific program on invasive alien species, Program 4. And you know, we all think this is fantastic, those of us who, are, who care about this issue, but the reality is that invasive alien species have been part of other programming directions in the past, and countries are not applying for these funds. Why is that? In fact, in the last 20 years, there's only been 11 projects that were funded through the GEF that were specific to invasive alien species. So countries just are not taking advantage of the fact that there, there's money out there. I think we can all agree that we need more money to do this important work. So what's, what's the problem here? I'm going to come back to the, what the problem is in a minute, okay, at the, at the end, actually. But now I'm going to tell you about the LifeWeb initiative that I manage at the, at the Secretariat. LifeWeb is not a fund, it's a matchmaking mechanism. So I work with donors and I work with the CBD parties. I work with the, the CBD parties and partners to, to develop good project proposals. And then I work with the donor community to try to get those projects funded. And the, the funding happens directly to the projects. So this is about creating partnerships. And there's a, we offer strategic advice and we organize donor roundtables. So the technical assistance is to try to create alignment between national planning and uh, you know, national biodiversity strategies and action plans, public action plans, and other planning strategies with the projects that are proposed. So that these projects are not proposed. Uh -oh. So that these projects are not proposed out of thin air, but they're actually part of a larger uh, uh, strategy. And also, uh, 
we offer donor roundtables. So we bring everyone physically together to, to have discussions about these things. There's been some success. About $250 million have been um, mobilized or facilitated through this process, and there's about a 47% match rate. And I'll tell you more about this uh, separate from this session. Last year, the uh, General Assembly of the UN decided, sorry, 2013, it was decided that 2014 would be the International Year for Small Island Developing States. So thinking about that and talking to several colleagues, we decided we'd try to really focus attention on some island issues through the LifeWeb initiative. So you, you've seen these statistics from, from Nick. I think uh, he must have read the same thing I read. So we, we developed the Island Resilience Campaign, and we just launched this at the 12th meeting of the Conference of the Parties of the CBD a few weeks ago in, in the Republic of Korea in Pyeongchang. And I'll tell you quickly what this is. It's a, well actually I won't because um, I'm running out of time. Uh, but this, this is a, to really focus attention on this issue and the CBD Secretariat and the LifeWeb Initiative will help to develop proposals to get some of this, this work funded and offer some, some strategic advice and who to talk to about this. The partners in this include uh, GLISPA, the Global Islands Partnership, CBD Secretariat, and the, and the Life Web Initiative, and we're looking for more partners as well, so perhaps uh, some people in this room would like to assist with this. Okay, I think this is almost my last slide. So how do we raise more funds for invasive alien species? First thing I would, I would suggest is to please support these governments in the development of good proposals. So there's a lot of experience in the room, uh, we have organized a workshop in June at our meeting in, in Montreal called the SUBSTA meeting for the Convention on Biodiversity. And we brought together island countries, we brought together island conservation and LISPA and several other partners, and we, we sat down to try to develop good proposals for island countries for the reasons that, that Nick brought up before. And uh, out of that came several good draft proposals and then following that one really good written proposal from the country of Ecuador who was at the meeting. Um, Ecuador sat down, I noticed, with the island conservation colleagues and then the guy from Ecuador sent me the proposal a few weeks ago and uh, it was very well written, well done uh, to uh, colleagues from island conservation who clearly helped them with this and they, they, they took the advice I gave them which was that we really need to start thinking about speaking the, the language of resilience. Because to sell an invasive alien species eradication project to a donor can be quite challenging. Um, because it's about killing things. And uh, you know that's one, that's one problem with it. It's also very specific. But if you can put it into the context of something larger, like ecosystem-based adaptation, climate change, uh, resilience, increasing the resilience of an ecosystem or restoring ecosystems. I think this is, this is a good strategy that you might think about. So this project from Ecuador was about island resilience in, in uh, Ecuador. And a key feature of it is the eradication of invasive alien species. So it's about leading with uh, a story that, that not only um, puts things into better perspective, but it also opens up other opportunities for funding because we have funding from biodiversity portfolios, which are very specific to invasive alien species, but there's also climate change portfolios of funding. And if you can develop projects in this way, that opens up more opportunities to access that funding. Almost uh, second to last year, align your plans and processes and think big. So what is the big picture that you want to achieve? And then how does this little project help to fit into that? If you can articulate that, donors are much more happy to speak with you and continue to, to work with you. So I want to thank the donors to the LifeWeb Initiative, which are the German government through BMU and the Jap Japan Biodiversity Fund that organizes workshops and technical meetings and donor roundtables. And then lastly, to thank you all.